Arlen Suderman with INTL FC Stone joins us. And uh, as we look at the uh, livestock trade, it's almost kind of like grains. You go 2019, oh, let's just look at 2020. Absolutely. African swine fever continues to be the central story. It has not played out the way many producers wanted to expect it. It's fairly well the way that we anticipated. We thought that we'd see those exports ramp up in the fourth quarter. They have. Maybe not to the extent yet that we expect. And I think a lot of that is because um, the buyers of the pork, that a lot of that pork's been bought. But they keep thinking, well, we're so close to a phase one trade agreement when the tariffs can be lifted. Let's wait to ship it and see yeah. if those tariffs get lifted. That make a big difference. But on the other hand, you look at that uh, China lifting the restrictions on U.S. poultry. That's an indication where China has been aggressively going around the world and lifting restrictions wherever they had them, trying to get poultry, beef, pork, all the above. Just showing the desperate situation with double digit food inflation in China because of African swine fever. At the uh, livestock, uh, the cattle sector, that is, uh, it's been kind of a story of the starts and stops. It has been. Um, but one of the encouraging things to me is, is when you look at this product market, very strong product market, and uh, particularly some of the, uh, the lower cuts. Um, which I think are indicative of what we're seeing on the world market is buyers and globally are starting to worry about this tightening protein supply and looking at alternative meats and now it's starting to work its way into the U.S. beef product market. Uh, let's talk about uh, the alternative meat market and, and, and who knows a year from now uh, Arden we could see uh, either it continuing to be a bigger discussion point or it was a blip on the screen. When we look at the overall picture and only with the proteins but even into the commodities, because some are saying some of the soy base doesn't taste too bad. We've got this huge corn to, you know, to supply to get rid of. Uh, so, so talk about how that plays, or is it something that doesn't play at all? Uh, you know, the fascinating thing is, is all about perception, and the, the millennials love the thought of an alternative meat, not really paying attention to all of the additives that go in it, which they are supposedly against as well. Uh, so I think it's longer than a year. I think in a year we'll be looking at continual growth. I do think it's something that uh, will eventually, they'll start looking at the other side of it. Um, say, look at everything that's in the products in order to make it like meat or whatever. Um, but for now, I think it is a legitimate uh, concern for the meat industry. Fortunately, the African swine fever is increasing demand offset that. But when that day comes and African swine fever is gone, we're going to need that demand. All right, Arnold. Well, always good to catch up with you. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you down the road at these meetings and uh, keep it up. So thanks for giving us a scoop of what's going on. Thank you, Ken. Arden Suderman with INTL FC Stone has joined us. Stay with us. More coming up.